One of the prominent concerns of Penny Dreadfuls was that it caused working class readers to dream above their status or that they might get bored with their current lifestyle and go in derelict search for adventure and excitement, in the case of the highwaymen, at the cost of aristocrats and upper-class citizens. Coupled with this worry was the very economic effect that the popularity of cheap print houses had on the publishing industry. With the advent of technology, the manufacturing prices dropped drastically, and thus some cheaper publishers of penny magazines and booklets sold everything from fiction and romance to news periodicals and political pamphlets, coupled with vivid illustrations for extremely low prices and in less time. This meant that the working class person could afford to be aware of political debate and issues, as well as have the independent freedom to pick and choose their own literary entertainment. This newfound power of the direction of the press that was so carefully guarded by the upper class and the government was unprecedented. English history largely paints the picture of the poor and working class citizens of England as susceptible to being victims of subterfuge with the deliberate spread of misinformation that they had no way of fact checking or disputing in a timely manner given their proximity to the rule makers and therefore taken advantage of in the process. It was commonplace in history that even though the laws being passed fell heaviest on the poor working class of England, they were often the last people to be informed about political happenings, if informed at all. With distribution and access rapidly changing in the Victorian area to accommodate the poor working class, their power to shape the literary world stemming from the advent of penny bloods and cheap printing showed that they were more in control to realize their power of demand than ever before. Therefore, they could realize that they were in numbers equally as powerful as the people who desired to lord over them. It played directly into the century-old fight for moral leadership. The remaining features of distinction between the working class and the upper class were the aristocratic values of good breeding. This was supposed to have meant the embodiment of etiquette, pristine behavior, and of course, upstanding morals. These attributes were given only to certain elite and working class citizens could never hope to achieve that kind of status, even through hard work. It is what cemented you and your family's role in society for generations to come. So you can see why leading the fight for morality among the working class was such a popular ticket for the upper and upper middle class. It was a sure way to showcase your awareness and empathy for the morally misguided working class as a lady or gentleman of innate bourgeois values and sensibilities, thus socially strengthening your foothold in society and the division between the classes. It was assuming the responsibility of monitoring and regulating every aspect of living for the other classes so no one forgets who has the real power. It was something many upper and middle class citizens did not find favor in sharing. If the working class began reading and receiving the education previously only slated for those with the income to afford one, they would inevitably be mixing and mingling with them. This could lead to the blurring of those ever sacred class divides. We all know the compelling power of reading once discovered. The working class may have readily consumed penny blood literature at first, but it opened the mind to other possibilities and other literature. Penny bloods might have just been the affordable, accessible stepping stone to an otherwise dismissed reading market. This is not to say that the Penny Dreadfuls did not warrant the questioning of their content in terms of impressionable readers and morality. It is, however, to point out a coexisting point of contention surrounding the affect and effect of penny literature, especially where there was the propagated concern of the literature being the catalyst behind increasing violent offenses among citizens who engaged in penny readership. Given that premise or pretense, wouldn't it make sense that the richer 
who often regarded the working class as innately gullible or illogical, would convince themselves that there was validity in feeling the mounting paranoia of the working class people being inundated with press that depicted various ways of torture, kidnap, robbery, murder, and other sadistic acts, acts that they would most often assume that they would be the target of, given the nature of Penny Dreadfuls as well. To quote Talbot Baines Reed in Leeds Mercury in 1884, the Penny Dreadfuls survived because a taste more or less disguised for the terrible is inborn in most of us. <laughs>